All right, welcome back. This is our segment in which we get to finally take data out of our database. And this is in a process called a query. Now, query is a small word in inquiry. It means asking a question, asking a question of a database. For example, here's a website, Cover My Tunes, and they provide artwork in a database. So let's imagine I want the original thriller. I want the original thriller album cover. Look at that. I just did a query. I did a database query. They have a relational database sitting in some server somewhere, and when I typed Thriller and hit this button, a request went through the internet and asked the server, do you have any album covers? In which the, the string Thriller is contained probably within the album cover title. It might even search other fields like artist or description. And then the database gives us back the answers. Well, we've got all sorts of covers that relate to Thriller. Now this one, this is interesting. This is a film that I recently watched. I wonder how they decided to show me that album cover. Maybe because the genre is Thriller. So you can see that a database query can be very useful at finding information by searching maybe just one column, one field, like album cover title, or a query can be very powerful and search all sorts of pieces of information and give us those data results back. So now is our time to dig into our own database of music albums, and we're going to build ourselves our first query. Now, I have entered some of my own data from a couple of albums that I find interesting. If you did the recent, most recent segment, you would have done so yourself. And now we're ready to extract that information in a useful and interesting way. So let's imagine you are running this uh, album set as kind of a loner library, and your friend comes up to you, I don't want anything before 1990. Everything went downhill in the 90s. I want to see what you got for every album before 1990, and I want to know the name of the album, and I want to know the rating and the artist, and when that artist was born. So I'm looking at my data and I'm saying, all right, I've got a bunch of albums, I've got names, I've got ratings. Down here in my album table, I've got artist name, or excuse me, my artist table, I've got artist name and birth year. So I should be able to get this data out, and I want the system to reconnect these, right? I don't I don't want a printout in which the artist listed for the album off the wall is two. No one knows who artist two is, only we do if we entered it manually down here in the artist table. We would see that artist two is Michael Jackson. We want the database to relink using the relationship that we created in a past segment. So the way we do that is we jump down to our database tool launcher, our menu, we can see that we are moving down the row of tools that are accessible to us on the left under the, the title database. So we're going to click queries, and then we have a couple of options. There are three different ways to make queries. Most databases have something similar to each of these three. We can think of the query, the SQL view is the coder view. This is where you type stuff, and it gives you data back. The design view is medium friendly, which is what we will click on. And just to show you, the other view that we have is the wizard. So the wizard means it'll guide you through step by step, and it's uh, not as much, it doesn't give you as much flexibility, but it's also easy. We're going to do the intermediate level. And that brings up our query designer. So the first thing that we need to do is tell it what tables do we want to be drawing our data from. In this case, I'm going to add both of our tables, the only two tables in our database, artist and album, and then I can close this window. All that window was doing was building our little work environment. And notice, because we are working with the tables as tables full of data that we haven't seen yet, we are seeing the columns of the artist table, what are the columns in the actual storage component, uh, we're seeing them listed vertically. So just keep that in mind. So the process we're going to go through is imagine that this 
grid down here. You can imagine that this table down here, once we populate it, will be converted into an output. And before I try to explain so much in words, let's see how this works. So imagine that I'm going to get a printout in that first column. Well, what do I want? I want the album name. So I'm going to click and drag name from the album table up here down to the first column in our Quarry Builder table. You'll notice there are tables everywhere. Databases themselves are made of tables. I want the name. What did my friend want? Wanted the rating. Now this is where we get to pull from the other table. I want the name of the person who um, wrote the the uh, the album. Now notice I I pause there for a second because name <laughs> I have name in both tables. So the uh, title of the columns only has to be unique by table. We might have a bunch of different names: names of artists, names of albums. It more most appropriately it would be album title. Uh, but I, that's neither here nor there at this point. So now we also wanted the birth year. Okay, so this says the field from which table, and then visible, will uh, we can exclude certain things from our output, and then we'll deal with the criterion in a second. So I've set up the most basic query, and now I'm going to jump up to the top and hit this database signal. Ooh, look, it says run query. Huh, look at that we have our first query result. Notice what's going on here. We are seeing the data recreated from both the album table here and the, uh, the artist table here. I notice this is a little bit confusing. We have two name columns. We can actually come down in the query and put in a, f a friendly printed column name for our particular query output. So I can say this is album name this is album rating, this is artist name, and artist uh, birth year. And now when I run the query, my output will be a little bit more user-friendly. Okay, so we have now reconstructed our tables. How many times did I have to type Michael Jackson into my artist table? Here's our artist table. Let's look at this. This is the glory of databases. I entered it once here in row two of the artist table, but when the query reconstructs it, it looks up, this is album bad, it was listed with artist ID two, and it looks up two in the artist table, and then it pulls the name and the birth year and sticks it in the query. And it does that all the way down. So in this case, it printed out all the records because I didn't tell it to not give me any records. And that brings us to the second powerful component of queries, which is the ability to not dump everything from every table onto the query output, but rather to select that, because our friends, as everything after 1990s, rubbish. So when uh, we filter uh, by, we actually need to include our release year. So I'm going to go ahead and drag release year from, let's make this a little bigger. We're dragging release year from our album table down into our query and then we are going to use the criterion row here to tell it that we only want something we want uh, before or less than 1990. And that's a very simple way to tell the database that please return me only rows from our output in which the release year is smaller than 1990. So let's go ahead and run this query. And we are nothing. OK, so the reason that when I ran this query and I asked the database to find me all of the entries that have albums that were released before 1990 is because this expression, less than 1990, was interpreted based on the type of data that my release year column was designed to store. So the way I can find out, well, hmm, I know I have albums that were published before 1990, so why can't it find them? So if I come back to my database home, go back to tables, and right-click the album, because I'm curious about what happened to my release year, and I go to edit, 
Look what came up. Release year. Field type. Text. In other words, when, ninth, when this is interpreted, it says, okay, well, the table or the column release year is storing text. So I'm going to look for any release year whose, uh, whose release year actually is this symbol followed by the character 1, followed by the character 9, then another 9, and then a 0. So you'll notice that if I come here and I just put 1990 in, it probably will find... Or I know I have a 1991. If I do that, notice that it finds exactly my two albums released in 1991 because it's matching the text 1991. But what I actually wanted was my year to be an integer or a number, in which case the year 1987, 1987, is mathematically less than 1991. So when I put in less than 1991, I am actually mathematically comparing the release years to this criteria of less than 1991. Now watch what I can do. This is unusual because I can come back here to my album design view and say, hmm, I actually want this to be an integer. Now when I save it, one of two things can happen. It can say, yep, okay, I can make all of the data that is currently in that column. I will go through and I will check to see if I can convert each of those values into an integer, into a number. If I can't, I'll give you, I'll give you a flag. I can't do it. But I believe that they're all convertible. So it saved everything is happy. So now watch, if I come back here to my query, this will now be interpreted by LibreOffice Base not as the character left caret, but as a mathematical expression representing any number less than 1990. So I can come back up to my run button. Ooh, now notice my results. These albums were all, not, they weren't published in less than 1990 as a character set, but rather they were mathematically published in the year less than 1990-1990. And this is cool. So I have used my database to retrieve information, and this is shareable information. This is a nice spreadsheet-based view, and I have my artist reprinted so that no matter where the viewer of our query looks, they can see the proper artist name. So let's say we want to do something with this data, like print it or share it. I just need a spreadsheet, so I can come here and say new, uh, new sheet, new spreadsheet. There's a big spreadsheet. Let's resize that to make it smaller. So I can come here. I'm going to select everything that I want to copy in the database with that upper left box. Right-click, copy. Excuse me, I don't even need to right-click. And then I'm going to click and drag any of those cells Oh, that only got me one. I want to click and drag from that entire upper left and move the entire table over. Now I've got it in a spreadsheet, and I can do whatever I want with it. I can print it. I can toggle with it. I can do anything I need. I could come up with an average rating of B2 through B7. Average rating of 4.1667. So you can see it's relatively easy to get data out of the database and move it into a spreadsheet. So your task for this particular little segment will be to, after having entered data on your own albums, to construct one or two interesting queries that return less than the complete contents of your database. And remember, how was it that I knew about how to do this particular jazz with the less than 1990? Well, I looked up in the documentation for LibreOffice. So every program that's out there, most good programs, have a formal documentation set that tells you what each of the features does. And you'll see this is our Databases 1 module, and you can jump down to Database Learning and Resource Links. And then you've got three options. I've got a tutorial video on the most, uh, most features of LibreOffice base. This is a lovely handbook PDF, but I actually want the official documentation, which brings me to this website where I can say, working with queries under database functionality, working with queries. And then I get a really long page that shows me all the details. Um, so I can do query design wizard is what we were working with. 
and it'll give you all sorts of tips down here on functions and you can certainly dig into this it'll tell you what to do if you want to sort by certain numeric adjustments and uh, this is a great place to come and look to learn more about databases so there we have it go ahead and run a couple more queries and be sure to post your results online for the world to see have fun